What's going on, everybody? I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Daniel Zavato here with us. Penny Dreadful, City of Angels, brand new show coming to Showtime. What's going on, man? How are you? Good, good. Good to have you here and really excited about the show. So why don't we wind things back a little bit? Take me back to shooting this thing and why it made sense for you. Well, uh, this has been a long process, man. Um, you know, the whole auditioning process and all that uh, was like a four month thing. So, uh, you know, and then we filmed for another like eight months. So it, it's been, you know, about like a year and a half of me spending time with, uh, with Tiago. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was one of those things that your agents call you and they're like, yo, there's this new show, it's, it's Penny Dreadful. And I'm like, I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they're doing a new, a new version of it, a new world. It's still the same creator, John Logan. Uh, so, you know, all the bells were going off. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, the next thing was like, you know, going into the room and trying to get the job, you know? So I think the cool thing is that this world has already existed. It's an extension of something that's already been there. But you get to do this whole new thing where you're kind of playing around differently. So what was the most fascinating part of the project for you? Dude, for me, it was just like being in that world, right? It's like the first time that I ever did like a, like a period piece. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really just like mind blowing, bro. Like, you know, there were days like, I mean, look, the, the, the production design is amazing. They literally, uh, did you get a chance to go or, or no? No, I haven't had a chance okay. to check it out yet. Oh, we'll make it happen, dude. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. It, it's like, it's, it's, it's insane. They, they built this, this city for us. It's, it's like there, it's tangible. You can touch it. You can feel it. The cars are there. There's like, you know, at times there's like 500 extras. Everybody's stressed. There's a the milkman, the, the, you know, the homeless guy and everybody is playing the part. And yeah, that for me was, um, it was a first, it was, it was, like I said, mind blowing and, and everything just felt so real that it made, it made our job easier, you know, cause you don't gotta be staring at a green screen. You gotta be imagining it or whatever it's, it's there. So that was really cool. Yeah, it's definitely much better than a green screen. And it's one thing to do a period piece, but like you went all the way back to the 30s. Like that's a yeah, whole different dude. time. Like oh, what was 100 the, years basically. Yeah. <laughs> what was the wildest part of kind of exploring the 30s? Um, so many things, dude. Um, so many things. I, I, I loved everything in the sense of like, you know, the cars and, and, and the clothing and, uh, you know, the buildings and, and, and just like, the little things, man, you know what I mean? That, that I feel like sometimes because of how we live nowadays where everything is so quick um, and, and everything is so immediate that we kind of sometimes forget like the simple things, you know? Um, a lot of the, of the show kind of um, goes around family, you know, the Vega family and, and just, you know, um, this man, you know, technology, mm -hmm. it's off the window and it's just, it's different. It changes things. Uh, you know the way you interact with people the way that you uh hang with people you know it's 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 a lot more um so it opened my 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 eyes to that you know yeah i mean it's amazing how much has changed in 100 years it's amazing what's happened in tv and film like the last five Dude, years right exactly that's no, what i was saying like the last five ten years it's really crazy it's really yeah. interesting too so like when you were first starting out as an actor like kind of take me back to that point where are you at like what did you want to do what were the goals you know where yeah. were you at with all that um, well, I, w I was born and raised in Costa Rica, so I, you know, I left Costa Rica when I was 18, and, you know, I just, I, I was a young kid, green, naive as hell, uh, with big dreams, you know, I, I just, I didn't know, all I knew was Entourage, I saw Entourage, and I was like, okay, so there's an agent, and I guess the agent <laughs> gives you jobs, and he's a fucking crazy, agents are crazy, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what my understanding of, I, I really didn't know the business side of of this world. I just knew that I, I love doing that. I love being on stage. I love telling stories. I loved uh, getting to know different cultures. And I just felt like, I mean, I, I was born in Costa Rica. I was born in, a, in, a, in the most beautiful farm in the world. You know what I mean? We have the best beaches, the best land. It's just the best country, man. And I just knew how lucky I was, but how big the world was, you know? Uh, I was lucky enough when I was young that my dad took me traveling a lot because he traveled for work. So I went with him. And it was just like very eye-opening. So as a young kid, I always wanted to leave Costa Rica as soon as I could uh, to kind of follow my dreams because we really we, we don't really have a um, a uh, business, a movie making. We don't we don't have that down there. So so yeah, I went to New York and I I went to study theater, man, and and I uh, I did that for like three four years, and then uh, 
you know, slowly little opportunities from open calls and, you know, uh, I kind of got myself into talking to you right now. Yeah. What have been some of the main ones for you that you look back on the most fondly in your career? Um, you know, funny enough, um, I think one of the biggest lessons in my life was not getting something that I was so close to getting. Mm. And it was my first audition ever. And it, it was such a whack in my face that it like woke me up and it just gave me this like, you're gonna get more no's than yes. And even if you're close to getting a yes, it doesn't matter. It's a no and it doesn't matter. People, like agents are not gonna care if you almost got it, you know what I mean? So uh, that one was a huge one for me. And then the, the first movie, I'll never forget, you know? Um, the Innocence and Beneath, like I both did those one after the other and they were just like, oh my God, I can stay in this country, I'm working. You know what I mean? That was a big thing for me. Yeah. Um, and and then really what kicked it off was it follows um which was an indie movie that we did uh in detroit and people loved it because it was kind of like in the 80s vibe of, of horror movies and uh and that's what brought me to la man so you know every, i think every every chapter is very important definitely who are some people you've worked with that you really enjoyed really learned from like who are some people that come to mind um, I, I, the first person that came to mind right away was Holly Hunter, um, because I, till today, she's, she's a close friend and, and I can, I, I can, and I do reach out to her a lot <laughs> when I'm going through stuff, you know, <laughs> um, but I've been really lucky, man. I, I've gotten to work with, you know, Holly Hunter and, and, uh, you know, now Nathan Lane, uh, who's also a great friend and. And, you know, with big guys like Alan Ball and John Logan, and, you know, Tim Robbins. I mean, I look, man, I, I've always, when I left uh, Costa Rica, my dream was to just work, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I think, uh, you know, um, like anybody, I've always wanted to work with the heavy hitters, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like if you're, I always see this as like an athlete. Like, if you want to know how good you are. You want to play against Kobe. You just want to see Absolutely. what I can do. Let me see if I can, you know, shimmy him and throw, you know, you want to, you want to, you want to see how that is. You want to throw punches and learn because those are the masters. I, I, I believe that the best way to learn is to do things, you know, not to just read and, and study, you know, you got to go and do it, you know? So I've learned so much from all these people and, and I've been so blessed because of that, man. Yeah, you got to go at it with people that are better than you that have been doing Hell it. Hell yeah, longer. bro. You got to be the That's one that loves the least, you know? Yeah, like just shut up and learn, you know? No question. I mean, Nathan Lane is right at the top of that list. Like, what did you pick up from him just hanging out with him? Bro, you know, the thing is, Nathan is, is, is the king of Broadway, right? Like, he owns Broadway. So, um, one of the most fascinating things that I had with him was episode six. Episode six um, was extremely well written. Uh, it, it felt like a play in an episode. It was just, bro, three page monologues, you know, nine page scenes. Wow. You, you just don't see this on TV, right? And and to be doing that work with with Nathan Lane next to me was, I mean, I could not ask for anything better than that because, you know, I obviously saw a lot of, of his movies growing up uh, and you know the birdcage and stuff later on in my life but i saw him in in a, in a play about like i don't know man maybe like five years no it has to be more like seven eight years ago he did the nads mm -hmm. uh on broadway with a friend of mine uh, johnny arsini and i just remember watching him being like holy like th that's that's an actor right there and i would love to work with him and and then i got to work with him bro so you know what i mean that's an amazing uh, full circle. Yeah, you ask the universe and sometimes it listens. <laughs> <laughs> so when people check out the show, what are some big things you want them to, to take away and to think about? Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things. I think, uh, first of all, it's just like the scale of the show. I think it's unbelievable. You know, I, I think what we were talking about before, like if you're going to go and do a 1930s piece, you know, you gotta, you gotta throw the bucks. You know what I mean? You gotta have the cars, you gotta have the infrastructures, you gotta have the sets, you gotta have all that. And it, and it has it. it. I mean, when you watch it, you just feel like you're in this world, which is really cool because it feels kind of dreamlike because there's like a supernatural element to it. But at the same time, it's very realistic because it is based on history uh, in many ways. Um, the cast is unbelievable, man. I mean, look, you got Nathan Lane, you got Adriana Barraza, 
you know, uh, who's amazing. You got Natalie Dormer, Rory Kinnear, uh, Carrie Bichet. I mean, you know, just really good actors. And and I think the story is really well written. There's a lot of um, it's a big ensemble piece, but all the all the storylines intertwine in a really cool way. And and I think that that you know at the same time being you know now an Angelino uh you know it's pretty cool to kind of see you know you drive around and you see all these big highways and you're like when the hell did this happen and how the hell did this happen and this show you know kind of kicks off with that and it kind of gives you an insight of you know what was going on in the 30s because when you hear about the 30s most of the times it's just about the big boom about movie making but never is it about a latino family in the in the middle of it right so i think that's pretty cool yeah, really looking forward to it. Danny, thanks for hanging out, man. And we'll talk to you down the road, all right? Appreciate it, bro. Nice to meet you.